What's up guys and welcome back for another solo mining episode and this is going to be going over a little bit more isogen mining but uh, we're in Poshman right now, Trig Space and I am going to be, in this episode I'm going to be uh, working on filling out the prospect with Rakavine. Rakavine is one of the Abyssal Ores and my first uh, kind of history with Rakavine was during Invasion when these ore anomalies and stuff were in high sec. So we ended up uh, building, a, my corporation ended up building a lot of uh, ships because of the isogen and the uh, Zydrine and stuff you get from this stuff. But we're um, we're kind of waiting for a flashpoint to actually get cleared that's near my uh, ore anomaly here in this border system. So while we're doing that, we're going to go ahead and kind of go through the fit that I'm using and kind of talk about the strategy with Poshman Mining and everything that kind of goes into that ordeal all right let's go and bring up my <clears throat> fit here and i'll put this in the description so you can copy it and everything but i like to use the prospect just to kind of have the cover ops cloak and everything going on with it but uh actually let's go here and to the simulation because i have the stuff saved i've already used one of the filaments so pretty simple i'm going to run minor twos we're going to keep this pretty cheap as we can so two minor twos, a covert ops cloak that's going to be helping us get around and just kind of stay uh, kind of concealed. And then you're going to want a prop mod. So I'm using a uh, 1MN Afterburner 2 because the ore sites in Poshman are what are considered deep space. So if you bookmark a rock, it, you won't actually uh, uh, fly right to it when you warp to it. It's always going to warp you to zero, which is a good thing. Right, and I usually mine Rakavine rocks that are like a hundred k away from zero. So if a player fleet or a player comes into the ore anomaly, I have a good amount of distance to just kind of cloak up. And that's usually what I do is I try to get on the backside of the Rakavine rock. So here, let me just kind of show you here. I'm posted up on the rock I want to be on right now, about seventy, almost eight thousand meters, and then. Here is zero out here, about 112 kilometers out. If anybody warps in, they're going to get here. Now, technically, you can warp in to like 100 if you're facing in the right direction. And you can kind of offset it that way. But back here, there's no real warpable. So if somebody tried to warp in at 100 to get around right top of me, they'd have to start somewhere back here. So that's why I'm kind of over here doing my thing. So the way Poshman works is it has, um, I think, what they consider limited local. So you won't see anybody in local. Uh, if you type in there, then you'll show up. It works a lot like uh, uh, wormhole space in that sense. So we are surviving, and all of our information is coming from D-Scan. That's one thing you're going to be wanting to keep up. Let's go ahead and get back into the fit here. Um, so the, the afterburner helps us when we warp to the actual ore anomaly to kind of burn towards our rock. And then, you know, post up and get kind of where we need to be. I throw a EM shield amp on here just to fill that hole. I like to run a survey scanner so I know if I'm putting my lasers on a rock that I can, you know, essentially get a full uh, mining hold out of. And then I've got two minor laser upgrade twos and lows. I have a warp core stab in the low and then an initial, uh, inertial stabilizer two to help with the line time in the low. And then I'm just running small core defense field extender ones just to get a little bit more EHP. Now, you're going to want inside here, there's a border 5 Poshman filament. This is what's going to bring you to a random border system. This is your in. And then we have a glorification 1 filament, and that is going to be our out. What I usually do is, once I get to a border system, if I haven't been there before, I try to make sure I have a safe nav. As you see right here, I've got a safe nav saved up. So... And you only have to do this really once, you know, after you do a lot of like trips to Poshman, you start kind of visiting the same border systems multiple times. Then when you like, you know, come into system, you're like, oh, I've been here because you see your safe nav and you just fly out there and, and do that your thing. This safe nav is um, pretty far out. Uh, so if like anything happens here, let's go ahead and uh, check our D scan. I don't really see anything on D scan. So <clears throat> let's go and drop cloak here. Wait for our targeting delay to expire. You're going to want to watch out for rats as well. So I'm going to target up this Rakavine and kind of go and get this um, this running. But uh, normally I'm just like sitting here where I'm at now. And I'm just kind of watching D-Scan. 
And if anything does happen, then I'm far enough away from every rock that I can just uh, hit cloak up right here and kind of ghost out. But really the goal here is to just pretty much uh, fill up as fast as possible. Got a flycatcher on D-scan and a saber. So all we're doing is we're basically looking at D-scan and making sure there's still a flashpoint within 10 AU of us. So they're about 10 AU. There's nobody within 5 AU of us. So but there's really nothing around this or anomaly anyway. But really, that's all I'm doing is like I'm just letting this rock or letting this ship just mine everything while we... Uh, kind of get everything moving as you can see here I'm at 2500 cubic meters in the hold right now and about 1.4 million uh, value is pretty good on this stuff and let's go and just kind of look at it and I'll show you here's what the refined is so we'll go down to five yeah the, I think everybody's at that flash point right now that's what I'm seeing but so for Rakuvine, we're going to get Trit, we're going to get Isogen, we're going to get Zydrine. On this same anomaly right here, we have Bez, and it's going to give you Trit, Isogen, Megasite, and then you have uh, Talon Acidite, or Potato War. I like to call it Potato War because it looks like a potato. But this is going to be Noxium, Megasite, Tritanium. So coming out here into Poshman and doing this kind of mining, if you're going after Potato War or Rakuvine, that is a good source of your isogen and noxium. Normally, I try to like come out and get one type of ore, like this trip would be a uh, rack of bean, and then I'll come back out and grab a uh, talonacetide or potato ore for uh, some noxium. Once you actually get your standings kind of better, then I, pr I prefer and recommend you go after a uh, spud main, which has to be, you know, you're probably, it's, it's in closer to home systems and stuff like that, but. Spud main is really nice because it essentially has everything in it. Kind of the uh, the end all, be all, as it were. But that's this is kind of like the process here, and I've come out here with an orca actually, <clears throat> and kind of use the same trick. Um, but this is just a single click, like go to cloak with a uh, orca. I'd have to suck in the drones and then cloak, which you know, works as well. But uh, with comp uh, and then you just cycle uh, if you're in like a porpoise or like a orca you would just cycle once I would probably recommend a porpoise honestly for it you'd cycle once to compress and then just have your uh, your drones continue doing doing their thing here it, it can be a little nerve wracking if you're not used to it and especially if, like right now we've got a lot of uh, activity on D-Scan within 14 AU but a lot of it has to do with that uh that flashpoint. So a strategy I'm gonna do, I'm gonna close these lasers and I'm going to cloak. Now the reason I want to do this, the reason I want to finish mining right now is because with everybody running that flashpoint, I can see them on D scan and they can see me. And if they decide to after their flashpoint or after their combat site to come and mess with me, because they see they've seen me on D scan this whole time, then that's what they'll that just gives them something to do whereas right now i'm off of d scan so once they actually get done running that flash point they don't see anything else on d scan they move on which is kind of what i want i want to be able to uh kind of keep everything moving this uh watch post is 11 au i'm pretty sure yeah this observatory flash point is where everybody's at the moment and then my safe is like out here as you can see. So it'll give you kind of like an idea of the system here. So you have the star, I have my ore anomaly here, and then I have a safe location here. The safe acts as like, you know, a safe. Like if something happens, I can you know warp out to it. And also it'll be um, the position I will use to go back to known space, which once we fill up, I'll show you that process. It'll basically take you to a um, minor, uh, a trig minor victory system in known space and then we'll have to uh kind of make our way back to the area of known space that we kind of work in which is why i like the prospect because you know most of the time those 
uh, minor victory systems are going to be low sec with a high sec connection. So once we get out of trick space, we'll be in a low sec system and then we can basically covert ops out of that system and then make our way back to wherever. But <clears throat> that's kind of how it goes. And like, if obviously if you don't lose the ship, then you go back, you maybe have some uh, other filaments stored up somewhere and you go drop your ore off, put, put another filament in your ship and then uh, kind of repeat the process. And eventually you'll, every border system that you go to will essentially have your safe pause in it. And uh, you know, business as usual i know a lot of people are asking me like how i do isogen how i do noxium for doing like manufacturing in high sec without actually going to low sec per se um because actually i find i'm more successful as far as mining uh volume in posh than, than i am in like low sec just because of like the different um like a kind of wormhole slash null like mechanics that you can use kind of to your advantage but uh yeah, I, I use, uh, you know, potato ore, rack bean, that's good ice gen, or um, on one of my other characters who has better trig standings, are they're able to actually get further in to, like, the home systems. If this character was actually good on standings, we could go a little bit deeper in, and we could just be filling up this thing with um, spud main, and that would just give us, you know, both uh, ice gen and noxium in uh, one piece of ore. I'm still waiting for this flash point to go, so uh, I'll... Uh, We'll cut to whenever they clear that and then continue mining. All right, something I want to cover too about descanning and just making your life a lot easier. I'm going to bring the angle down to 5, and I'm going to have the AU set to 14.3. We know we're waiting on this um, observatory flashpoint. So what you can do actually is if you hold down V as in Victor, and then you actually go over here and you click this uh, combat anomaly, it'll automatically orient orientate your camera and the cone and it'll be scanning in that actual direction so we can see now that we have a uh some loki's we've got some warriors over there so you can tell like all everything that we're you know that's in range of us we can we can kind of see but i'm not mining right now because i just don't want to be on d scan for when they start kind of looking around for other stuff to do i would rather um d scan just be completely cleared for when I start but holding down V and then clicking uh, things in either the star map or you can even do it down here in the uh, probe launcher and it'll orientate you in that direction and let you scan that way that's uh, a really good trick to know for you know both trig and uh, wormhole space all right that flash point is now gone and we got lasers back on and this is what we're doing now. We're just going to be continually letting the miners run while we're uh, kind of checking everything. I like having the system map up because it allows me to see new combat anomalies that kind of pop up. We have uh, one ship on D-Scan right now. A uh, frigate way out there. It could be a scout. There's also a uh, NPC Zernitra over there where that uh, <coughs> flashpoint was. <coughs> So, I know exactly where it is just by using that uh, that hold down V and click the uh, anomaly trick. But right now we're just, you know, and these uh, cycles <clears throat> are about a minute. So we're looking at about 668 uh, cubic meters per minute. Not too fast. You could obviously like fly a, better, a bigger ship and do this. But I just kind of like having the utility that the prospect offers for this kind of thing. But yeah, this is the process. Just kind of keep it, keep stuff on rocks. I also carry a service scanner just to like check the uh, the rock density. So we'll go ahead and do that real quick. You can see here this one um, started off with like twenty something thousand cubic meters, so it has about eighteen thousand left, <clears throat> which means that uh, we have plenty of racking in this rock to fill up the prospect, which is exactly what we want. We don't have to worry about traveling and hitting uh, multiple different rocks and stuff as we kind of move through this. But <clears throat> I can't, <clears throat> excuse me, I can't sh stress enough that um, using D-Scan and keep an eye on what's around you while you're going. Uh, yeah, it's not as relaxing as high-sec mining, but it's also not as dangerous as uh, low-sec mining um, because, you know, there's... Um, a lot less things that a uh, 
a person can use. Like the being local in uh, Losec is a very good tool for people who are looking to gank. Plus, Losec is a lot easier to get to for gankers. But most people out here are going to be running these uh, combat sites, and so as long as you just keep yourself off D scan, and you know you mind your surroundings, you'll be uh, perfectly fine. We have uh, trig ships on D scan, but I'm not really concerned with that. And the other thing too is if you actually like work on your trig standings by killing like rogue drones or whatever the case may be, even if trig rats show up on the anomaly, they won't attack you. They'll show up as red, but they actually won't attack you if your standings are really, really good with them. And that's another driving factor too is if you have really good trig standings, you're able to go into like home systems where there's better ore anomalies and better combat sites and docking and a lot of other stuff gets um, unlocked for actual trig structures. So I'll try, I'm going to look on, I'm looking to do a video on how to uh, farm the uh, trig standings as a solo player. So look out for that because it's something that I actually need to work on with this alt as well. We're at 6,100. We're about halfway. We're halfway to full right now. So we'll, uh, I'll, you know, kind of jump to whenever we're, uh, you know, close to being filled up and we'll kind of show the, uh, the exit strategy here and, and that'll be, uh, the close of this episode for a uh, good old Poshman mining. All right. We are full up on Rakavine. So now I'm going to go over the exit strategy here. So I'm going to go ahead and warp to my safe. Another thing I should know too, is I'm always in a fleet, um, Anytime you're doing like abyssals or anything with filaments, try to stay in a fleet. I'm also going to... I'm also going to set my destination to Jita. That way when we come out of the filament, we'll have a good idea of where we're, um, where we're kind of at. I'm going to leave my map up too because I'm going to show you guys a trick for uh, scouting gates and stuff. I'm going to do a descan here. Shouldn't be a problem. I'm going to drop cloak. Go here. And activate. And we're exiting trick space. Once we land, we're going to want to cloak up. We've got two other people here. It looks like we are nine jumps from Jita, so that is not bad at all. Since I already have the destination set, then we can go ahead and see the gate that we need to go in right here, which is 17 AU away. So let's go ahead and I'm going to turn off this. Uh, there we go. But we, you can go to the sun or you can go closer to the actual gate that you need to kind of pass through. Where is it? There it is. So it's way out here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to roll over here. I'm going to go to this moon. I'm going to go warp 100 to the moon that's in the same area as the gate. And then we're also going to turn our angle down. We're going to use the same strategy that we used when we were looking at the flashpoint. Essentially, we're going to hold down B for Victor, and we're going to click the gate, and we're going to make sure the gate is clear. And if there's nothing on that gate, then we will go through it, and then we'll be just eight jumps away from... Uh, I use Jita as kind of like a, an anchor point. It's kind of where I keep uh, filaments and, and things like that. So, here we are. What do we got? That's a drake on the gate. What you can also do is we can go ahead and align to the gate. That way, when we're ready to go, we're ready to go, right? I am probably away from this. Oh, that Drake is actually uh, close to us. So we're going to make sure that he's like where he's going. And you see right here, we're just kind of, we're pretty close to the gate. All right, I don't see anything. So let's go ahead and we're already aligned. Go ahead and jump through. And just as we suspected, the gate is clear. I've been to Tassie a lot, actually. 
Actually, we got two uh, low tech systems we get to go through. Sweet. So, same strategy. This uh, moon that's next to the gate, we need to go on. Once we hit warp, go ahead and hit cloak. This is actually really good. I was um, <clears throat> I was kind of hoping we hit a double uh, low tech system back to back so we can kind of show the process. But in most cases, and whether it be like in null sec or whatever, you never really want to jump directly to the gate because you never know what's actually waiting for you. So, all right, same strategy as before. Go ahead and hold down V. I don't see anything on the gate. What we'll do is we'll go ahead and align to said gate. That way, looks like we're pretty much clear. There's a magnate over there. Air Explorer. So, we're going to go ahead and jump now that we're aligned. So, we'll actually be seven jumps from Jita once we uh, kind of get through here. No other real uh, craziness going on. But, that is, um, that's how to do it. Getting two Poshman is no big deal. Like, I usually, I jump out. I have a, actually a, um, a mark, a bookmark in Jita. And that, uh, that I just, you know, I go to Poshman from Jita. And that's as simple as using the filament and then popping up in the system. But uh, before you do anything, every time you go to a new home system, if you haven't been there before and you don't have a safe there, make a safe um, before you even start doing anything. And just keep those, like, bookmarks kind of active. And then... You could technically actually make safes. Um, if every time you exit Poshman into like a, a minor victory system, if you always set your destination to say like Jita or whatever, then you could technically actually go ahead and make like um, gate scout bookmarks as well to make the what we just did process a little bit uh, quicker. But uh, there's also another strategy you can do too, where you can have multiple um, characters. So we can have like one character. Uh, flying like a porpoise or something and then the other character flying like a uh, a prospect and they those guys would just stay in that border system and you would only actually like film it in with like let's say a blockade runner or something and then film it out just to bring out or so you could actually keep your mining forces there it's a little more involved it takes a little bit more setup this is um, a little bit you know better as like a day trip kind of a situation because 30 million for this ship and that and you know includes the uh the filaments and the value of Rakavine that we pulled out was around seven million but really the important thing with that is the actual uh isogen for it anyway i hope you guys enjoyed this video showing a little posture and mining i know you guys were kind of curious I've, I've seen comments before about it but uh hit the like button hit the subscribe button if you want to support the channel consider becoming a channel member where you get membership badges and emojis and channel recognition across the video watch pages and the channel watch page but i will that's it for this one i'll see you in the next one peace out